In the first video, we began by meshing these parts. And in the second video, we set up the simulation using the necessary keywords in LS Prepost. For the third video, we checked that the model was sound. And we then submitted the job using LS Run. So if you haven't already seen those videos, I would suggest you do so before starting this one. And in this last video, we will take a look at the results and familiarize ourselves with some of the post-processing capabilities of LS Prepost. Continuing from where we left off in the previous video, the results are now finished, so let's take a look at them. There is a shortcut to opening LS Prepost from LS Run, which you can see here. And to view the results, choose the Dtree plot file and press the LS Prepost icon. Let me first just position this a bit better. Now, let us start the animation to see how the simulation turned out. This is perhaps a bit too fast to see what's going on, so I will decrease the animation speed a bit. Now you can see more clearly what's happening. And if you check this animation box on the side, you can also drag this slider manually to step through the animation like this. Now, only a quarter of this square tube had to be modeled thanks to symmetries, but there is a neat trick we can do to still get the whole tube. Under Model, there is an icon down here called Reflect. By reflecting the model about the YZ plane, as well as the XZ plane, we can now see the whole square tube. And if I start the animation again, we get a nice full view of the tube being crushed. Next, let's take a look at some of the plotting tools. A fringe plot can be very helpful for understanding what's going on. So let's take the von Mises stress, for example, by clicking on it and then clicking Apply. You see that the color bar has been updated. And when I start the animation again, we will see the results in the form of von Mises stress. We could also plot the effective plastic strain, which we made sure to request with the keyword database extend binary in the second video. As you can see, there are several categories and plenty of components that you can fringe plot. The miscellaneous category has some interesting components in it, such as the triaxiality, for instance. Let us move over to displacements and velocities. And I'll show you something. If I, for example, plot the Z displacement, and you look at the color bar, you notice that the scale changes with every frame. This can make comparisons a bit difficult. So let's look at the settings for the fringe range. By default, it is set to dynamic, which means that the minimum and maximum values change for every frame. Let's instead set it to user-defined and set the minimum value to minus 80 in this case, millimeters, which is the prescribed motion of the square end plate. We then press update and restart the animation. And as you can see, the fringe range then remains constant throughout the animation. Moving on, the history plot tool is very useful. As you can see, you can plot results globally on the part level, on the element level, as well as on the nodal level. Let us examine the stress in an element during the simulation. This element could be interesting, for instance, since it is close to where the action is. 
Let me first plot the X stress, like that. I will then add also the Y and Z stresses. Just move this side a little bit. If we mark these two, we can add them to the already existing plot by clicking the Add button down here. And you will achieve the same result if instead you mark all three from the beginning and click Plot button. I will also show you how to use the XY plot tool to create what's known as a cross plot. But for that, we first need some data. I will first plot the effective plastic strain for this element. Then I will click Save and give the file a name. I will also plot the effective stress for the same element and save that as well. Here, you can choose the output format you want the file to have. So let us then move to the XY plot tool. And as you can see, the two files we just saved are here automatically. If you would want to add some text file with data to be used in a plot, you can do so by clicking on Add here and then selecting it from its file folder. To create the cross plot, first select cross, and then first click on the file with the data you want on the x-axis, then click on it again, and then do the same thing for the data you want on the y-axis. This means that effective stress will be plotted as a function of effective plastic strain. And this you can save in the same way as before. You can see that there are two more plot icons up here. One for ASCII output and one for binary output. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange and is a system for representing letters and other characters in a computer. We need not go into the technical details here, but I'll summarize it by saying that an ASCII output file is in a human readable form, so you can open it in a text editor and see what it contains, whereas if you try to do the same thing with a binary output file, you will only be met by a bunch of strange looking symbols which you won't understand seeing as you're not a computer. Also, the binary output format allows for faster information processing in the computer, which means that it takes less time for a designer to write the output, resulting in your simulation finishing faster. Since we ran the simulation with the MPP version of Elasdynum, the output will be in the binary format. So we use the plot tool. For binary output. Had we used the SMP version instead, we would find the same functionality in the plot tool for ASCII output. First, you need to load the binary output data from the file called bin out. And now we see that we have the results from global statistics resultant contact interface forces, as well as cross-section forces, which we specifically requested as output. We could first have a look at some of the model energies available in global statistics. So let's plot kinetic and internal energy, as well as total energy, to verify that the energies are OK.
We can add a legend to the plot so that we can see which curve represents which energy component. You can do so here under title by checking the box for legend. There are also other ways in which you could customize your plot, such as changing the title, adding minimum and maximum values, for instance. We could also take a look at how the critical time step varies throughout the simulation. And as you can see, it is clear that it decreases as the square tube starts to deform. Next, we have the contact forces under RC force. The numbers one and two refers to the ID of the contact keyword. So one is for the contact between the square tube and the flat plane, and two is for the square tube self-contact. The letters M and S refer to master and slave in the contact definition, which were instead called A and B when we set up the contact keywords in video two, where A denotes the slave side and B denotes the master side. So for the contact between the tube and a flat plate, we could examine the resultant force that the tube experiences. It seems to be quite uh, oscillative when the contact is first initiated, but then seems to exhibit a more reasonable behavior. Lastly, we should also examine the cross-section plane that we defined 12 millimeters in from the edge of the square tube. I'm going to plot the total force. And as you can see, it is very oscillative and hard to interpret. But it is possible to apply numerical filters on your data by clicking on filter down here. You then choose the filter that you wish to apply with these settings here. Now these, um, these settings will be quite arbitrary. I mostly just want to show you how this functions. So if you click apply now, you can see that the resulting curve is a lot smoother and much more useful. I want to show you one more thing as well. And that is how you can easily transform this curve into stress instead of force with the curve operations tool. Let us first go back and add area to the plot by using the add function. Now, as we all know, stress is equal to force divided by area. So let's do just that by going to operations, choosing divide curves, and picking the force curve as the numerator and the area curve as the denominator. And hitting apply, you can see that the curve now shows stress in megapascals throughout the simulation. And this here seems like a good place to stop this video.